So can I have the clicker? Hi, everybody. It's Kate Quinn. Welcome to Facebook Live on Sundays with Kate Quinn. And I hope you guys will have fun. We're going to just give a second for people to go ahead and get logged in. And then we'll get started. Hi, Joanne. How are you doing today? So glad that you could make it. So if you can see well and you feel like your visibility is good, this is the color of our thread today. I did a little thread test down here. So hopefully everybody will be able to see the design really well with that contrast. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Linda. Hi, man. I feel like this is a collection of all my best friends. <laughs> so glad to, that you guys could make it today. Okay, let's get started. So in the header, I put up the information about what we're doing today. I'm going to try and do a few border options and the goal is to use the basic templates, you know, so these are products maybe that a lot of people already have. Obviously the usage of it is fairly basic. You probably have seen them used before, but my plan is to integrate them and use them together and show you how you can make your design progressively more complex. And then in addition to that, it'll teach you about the design progression, how we add layering to the design to make it more complex, more um, stitch dense as well. So hopefully that'll be some great information for you guys. I will tell you that I need to leave around four o'clock. So I'm gonna have to be quick and concise today and I have more pr content probably than I can fit in. So I will probably have to add some in next time, okay? But let's get started. Let's make sure I have all of my tools. So I've got everything on my ruler rack and I'm just gonna show you real quick a couple of extra things that I'm using. This is maybe just to show you some of the measurements or of some of the things that we're gonna do. I actually have also taken this, which is ruler tape right here. And this can be used along with um, the arrows, ruler arrows, that would let you mark, let's see if I can open it, I can't get that little edge right there, but it's almost translucent, you know, it's really thin, and it's a quarter inch exactly, and then I've marked my clamshell with this so that I know what line I'm going to use. So this could be something that you could use as well. This usually comes in a three pack of different colors. I honestly don't know the brand, so, oh, so we'll see. So somebody said, um, did I use straight line something? What did they ask? Let me see if I can answer that question. Do you use the straight stitch plate when you do ruler work using the Bernina? Sue, what a good question. And I'll answer that for pretty much everybody right now. On this machine, this is a Baby Lock Altair. And if I have this foot on, this is the Westerly High Shank foot. And I just put it on right after I turned the machine on. The needle actually for this machine would not be centered. It would actually be off to the side. In fact, I'll put it at the default area um, just so you can see that because I think this is kind of important. So I'm going to put the needle back to its regular position. I have to press the button a few times. And let me show you, I'll kind of get you in a little closer so you can see what I'm seeing. See how the needle is not aligned? So on this machine, if I am using my westerly foot, I have to move the needle over so that it's in line with the foot in order for me to stitch with rulers correctly. So on this machine, the distance is a left right shift, so going that way, of 1.25 millimeters on my machine. And I just set that on my machine and then I lower my feed dogs, I check my tension and I have a lock button on the screen of my machine so that if I touch the screen, it doesn't make any changes. So now you can see that my needle is right in line. If your machine does not require you to move your needle over and it has a straight stitch needle plate that comes with your machine, you should be okay to use your straight stitch throat plate anytime that you would use your ruler foot. It's always best to test that. So you can just lower your foot down and then Right now, just watch and make sure that it would fit into the hole of your straight stitch plate without any obstruction. Make sure that the needle is going right in that center with even spacing all around. If you can do that, 
then you should be able to use a straight stitch plate with any machine that you have with your ruler foot. Okay, let's get started. We've got a lot of stuff to cover today. So there, hope that answered that question. So let's talk about the spacing right here on this design so we can kind of get you oriented to where we're at. Right here, I've made um, some space. So this is our first one. The width of this is five and a half. So let's come out a little bit more so we can get you guys a better view. It's five and a half inches. What that means is that the seam from the, to the other seam, not this center mark, but this width would be five and a half. When I do this design, it is possible that I can change the spacing and I'll be talking to you about that. So the first decision that I made is I decided I'm going to use my three inch clamshell. So I needed some reference marks to align other pieces of the design. I don't need these to align the clamshell because the clamshell is going to align itself. But let me put it on and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so obviously this distance across is three inches and this is one and a half. So what I wanted is I wanted some space in the middle for another piece. So this is actually wider. If this was three inches and I did this clamshell, these would touch right in the center if this was three inches. I made it wider so that I can have some room to play. And because I'm gonna line up some additional elements each time that I go through here, I wanna have that center position so that I can find those alignments as I go. So what I want is the hump right here is gonna be lined up on these lines right there. So I made all of these markings to fit that and this little orange tape that I put on, normally I would line up this template right on this line like that and I would stitch that out. So this first line right there would be on that seam line. I'm actually gonna push my clamshell up a little bit so that he's up above but I am going to line up some designs right on this reference line and we'll actually stitch those first. So what I've done is I've created space for my design and I've created a little width so that there's some space in the center for some elements as well. So this distance, this three is going to be marked off by this tool, but we're gonna sew with a different tool first. Okay, so just letting you know that this is based on the clamshell, and I'll, I'll show you a little picture of it, if I can find it. Oh, right here, let's see if I can grab it. Oh no, I just tossed, I tossed stuff everywhere. <laughs> let's just sew. Okay, so let's start with this one. Okay, I've marked a line right there, and all I did is I laid this against the ruler, and I know how much width it is, and I want this line to be a quarter inch above. So if I line it up right there, I'll kind of get it lined up for you. If this line is on this right here, this reference line is a quarter inch. Now we do have several circles on quilts that already have that line, but this particular one didn't have that. So if yours has it, you're good to go. You can use many different shapes. It doesn't have to be this one, but this is the one that we're using because this is the one that's in the sampler set. Okay, so what I want with this is on each of these three inch lines from this base, I want to put this design centered like that. And right on the bottom, it's flat, so we'll just kind of scoot along as we go. So let's go ahead and start. We'll just start here on the end. I'm using this reference line right there and it's marked on the bottom and it's, dry, it's a vis-a-vis -vis marker, so it won't wipe off on the quilt but that's gonna let me get aligned. So I'm using the center line of the ruler here and the center line here on this line, and I'm gonna put my foot in and I'm gonna sew this shape, and then I'm gonna travel over to the next line and sew the next one. All right, so I'm just checking my alignment real quick, make sure I could fit this in nicely. We'll just start in the middle because we'll have to sew the whole shape anyway. All right, let's get these threads underneath. Was that complicated direction so far? Basically the width of the channel 
from one to the next one is that three inches. So if I was using a two inch clamshell instead of this three inch clamshell, how wide would my width be between these lines? It's a quiz, right? If you know the answer, you can throw that out there. All right, let's start. We'll just sew and then we're gonna move along. Okay, so right here, what I can do is I can add another element right here if I want to, or I can use the little bitty straight edge that is there and I can scoot over. I'm gonna turn it so you can see what I see. If I can keep this aligned and I can scoot along, I should be able to sew pretty much right on that straight line. I have to sew until I get to B, so this does require that I'm moving that template several times. I have to kind of adjust along it. And what I would do is, if that bothered me, you could just take it off and use a straight edge, but if you just wanna use this, you can use this. This prevents you from having to shift the template so many times. And I'm trying to get to this line. So there's a center line here and here, and I only need like two more stitches to get there, I think. So I'm right on the center line, and I'm gonna line it up again, get it aligned on all of the lines right here and right here, and then I'll sew this. I can go any direction, it doesn't matter. So get, get to B, and then I can start scooting. I'm trying to keep the back aligned too, because there's a curvature right here. If I go too far, I start to curve. So I wanna stay right at B and not creep up the curve. But it is, you know, it's kind of slow work, but I'm only traveling a short distance, right? So I don't need to worry too much because I'm not going very far. And this is a little bit faster than if I was trying to take the template on and off each time. So that's why I chose to do it this way because then I don't have to take it off. So I'm right in the center. I can tell that my needle's on the mark line and I'll get it lined up again. So a little smushing, get us right on our line. We're right here and right here. And let's go ahead and we'll stitch that out. Come over to B again, and then we'll just keep moving down. Just keep everybody lined up. If you need to, you can look behind you. That's gonna help you get your quarter inch aligned a little better. So what would be great is if I was doing this actually in a quilt border, then I would have the stitch line to be my alignment. I could actually stitch right down the stitch line. I can use my spacing gauge if I needed to to keep me aligned on the quarter inch. And I could just go mark it at three inches or whatever my clamshell distance is. So we're using that three inch clamshell because we're gonna put that in next but I could make these closer together. I don't have to go three inches wide. I could go two inches wide. This will still stitch in at that width, but you, you'll see that the designs would be a little closer together, right? So you can make different changes in the stitch density by using a little bit different tools. So for example, if I was using this as the clamshell, you know, what we're measuring is this two inch width and we could just put these a little closer together. What that would do is make a tighter stitch density. Right now, we're gonna have a little space in between each of these three inches right here. But you'd have less space if you use this two inch shape. Okay, so that's how you can make some changes. I'm aligned right here on the center and on this line, and we're gonna put this shape in. We'll close it up and come over to B and then we'll just keep finishing it up. We'll try to get us all the way across. Stopping when your foot's in B, otherwise you're gonna start curving and we'll just walk it over. So that seems like it's a little bit, you know, we're constantly moving the template. We could even use this edge for a straight edge if you wanted to, because this is also straight. But this is helping me stay on the line with the little extra line that I made. It's helping me stay on point. So we need one more stitch and then we're right in the middle and we'll put this last one in. Okay, and you 
could just continue this down until your border is filled in, however long you want it. As always, if you're working with a border, it's good if you can start in the center and work out to the edges if you want to have it symmetrical. That helps, you know, make sure that you have that same start in the center. But if your border is longer on one side than the other, you're always going to have to make some adjustments. That's just how it is. All right, so let me show you what we have so far before we add anything else. So we've done some planning and we've created the width for our border and we've put in one element of the design and then we're gonna add another element. Okay, so I've just taped this, make sure that my key doesn't get lost. We'll keep him handy on the ruler rack. All right, so this is what we've got so far. Let's come out just a little bit so you can see it better. So we just have a little space. We just have this shape. He's aligned right here on the bottom and he's evenly spaced as we go along. So let's add in another piece right now. So now that I've got this as my straight line on the bottom, I can use another straight edge and I can even put in another element right here. So let's just go ahead and do that since we're already in this line. I could also do this element at the same time, right? But I wanted to show you what this looked like just by itself, okay? The next piece that I'm gonna add in is this little guy right here. Now we can add this shape and this shape at the same time because they're both going to align right here on the center. So we could sew this in, put this on, and then stitch across, and then do this one and do the center one, and that would be faster. We wouldn't be double stitching across here, but this gives you a chance to see this is how it looks like with just this piece, then we're gonna add another element in. All right, so let's do that. And I'm actually gonna shift my needle position so it is centered real quickly. Centered where? Centered on this blue reference line so that this guy can be centered once we start sewing. He's like about two or three stitches, I think, away from the center. Right there, okay. So let's put this on and we'll get started. I need a little piece of tape because this little guy is torn. I can see my little tape is kind of hanging around. I need to pull that off later. So make your little pull tab, just fold this in at the 45 degree to make a little tab, and then you can just put that on there. Make sure you're kind of close to the edge right here that holds that so that as you're stitching, this is not wiggling around. Now, we're gonna line it up the same. Again, we have those reference lines and we're gonna be putting it right aligned on the inside right here. It stitches pretty close to this other one. It's gonna be like a little bitty echo right inside. Let's see, I think my fabric is a little bit caught there. I'm right on the edge, so I'm gonna to have to give it a little tug. There we go. Well, that was not the best, right? I'm right on the edge right here, so it's puckering up a little bit. So I can use the straight edge, but I gotta take this off to do it because we have to travel to the next one. There's only a few of these, so we'll just easily lift this up. We can just flip this back and leave it open. And we can even just use this edge to get us right over to this other spot. So I'm checking also that I'm trying to stitch right in the existing line. That'll help clean up the design if any of my lines are a little wonky. Once I put some more thread in there, it's gonna look even better. So let's put this on. We'll line it right up on the center line. So we've got the center line here, and we'll try to make sure this line is aligned. On this template, there already is an alignment line right here going this way. So as we sew down this way, we already have the space for this to line up. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll stitch this one to the top and we'll come around and then we'll just move over and stitch straight. So you can see it's definitely going to be faster, but 
what happens when we add this piece in is we're changing the stitch density here. So this is now going to be quite a bit tighter than its little partner right here, which is open. So if you want less density, this is your option. If you want a little bit more complexity of your look, then you can add another shape or even another shape on the outside if you want to. So let's go ahead and don't lose our little key guy there. We'll just flip this around so we can use this side. So right here, we're going to use that and I can use my spacing gauge if I need to or if I'm comfortable with my alignment, I'll just use my eyeball, get right to the center and then let's put this back on. Oh, my tape doesn't like that. Let's see, I'm just going to pull that off. That's too complicated. All right, and always making sure our key is secure before we sew. So we'll line it up right on the center line. So we're looking to get this aligned as we stitch, and that'll put us right in the middle of that existing design. To me, this kind of looks like a flower bud. It gives that a little bit of layering there as you go, and I just think it's really pretty. So if you had a floral theme for your quilt, this could be fun. And it's also just got some unique shapes, right? So let's stitch across to the next one. We'll fill all of these in just so we can get all of them. I think that'll give us the best look for the finished design right now. So get to the center, and then we'll put this back on. So let's talk about how else, what else we would need to do. So we are doing one side of the border at this point. And what I would do is I would do the other side and I would do the other side exactly the same. So when we do the other side, we'll show you how we can um, do it a little faster. I probably wanna put at least one or two of these in on the other side so that you can see the whole border shape. Otherwise you won't really get the whole sense of it because we won't have all the pieces aligned. So this definitely lets us clean up that stitch line on the bottom. All right. Last week we had really, really bad stormy weather, so we did not have good reception. Actually today it's beautiful, puffy white clouds, bright sunny day. It's about 80 something, it's really pleasant. All right, let's get lined up and I'll just scoot these threads out of the way. So check the back position and the front that lets you get your inner shape lined right up on the other one. Okay, and then I'll tack this right here. I would go ahead and I'd finish this whole line and then we would do the exact same on the other side. So let me just show you, we made the lines go all the way across and that's why we extended those lines. So. Right now we showed you that we use those three inch mark lines to align the design up, but let me show you another important feature that those lines are gonna have for us on the other side. Let's cut this off and I'll show you the design real quick. Okay, so here's what we have so far. I love it, don't you think that's like, that's an easy border, that's not super complicated, right? And we can change the spacing, as I said, we have about um, one and a half inch maybe, I think it's a little bit bigger certainly than one. So if we had this at two inch spacing, they would just be a little closer together. So you can have that if you want them to be closer together. The lines right here, not only is their function to align this shape, these two shapes, but then when I go to the other side and I'm doing it on this alignment, then these can line up so that they are in a line. Otherwise, they're gonna be a little bit odd. Another design option for you is you could do them offset if you wanted. If you wanted to make this space a little narrower, but you still had this center line, this is three, so this would be one and a half, and you could line one right up in the middle, going the opposite direction. So that's just another way that you can use this. This is not a complicated usage. It's pretty easy but I do wanna go ahead and add at least a few on this side because we're gonna now 
show you how we're gonna add a little bit more complexity to this design. So let's go ahead, we'll stitch it out real quick. Um, so let's see, do you have any questions, babe? All right, if you have any questions, I do have Honey helping me today. So you can throw those his way and he will help me. And we can put this on first. It doesn't matter which order that we do them in as long as we do both of them. So on this side, we'll show you how we do both of these designs at the same time. And the benefit to that is what that will do is less stitching in the seam line. Like right here, this is all double stitched. If we do these together at the same time, then we will not have that. We will just have a single line of stitching going across that area. So again, that line right there is allowing us to align those designs together. Hey, sweetie, my screen just went off. So there we go, we just did the first one, and then we'll put the next one on. And we can change the order so that we always end with the one with the straight edge on the bottom, and I'll show you what I mean. So right now we're gonna put the other one on and sew across, and then I can just stitch that one first because it's already on, and do that, and then add the other one in and then change. And that way we maybe have a little bit less switching as we go. So let me show you um, just an example. So the sizes are the spin effects number four at three and a half, which is part of the sampler set kit. And then the circles on quilts number 36, which sews out at five and a half. That's this one right here. And this is also in the sampler set. But let me just grab a different one just to show you an idea of how you can use it differently. You know, this one is seven and a half inches when it sews the regular design. So this is half of seven and a half, right? So this is three and three quarters. But this one already has the reference line on the bottom right there. So I could do something similar just like this, but taller just using something like that. I could even put this on right now on top of this and have these centers cross over or touch whatever I wanted. This is a, a way that you can create another layer of complexity and change the design up. So if you have some of these different shapes like that, especially ones with the straight edge on the bottom like that, there are so many ways that you can make amazing borders with something like this. Okay, so how do I get the bobbin thread on top of the material? So Jan, when I cut my thread and I do the next one, I'll make sure that I add that in. All right, so let's see where we're going here. <sighs> Looks like we're having connection issues. Again, I spoke too soon. So I just paused because I didn't want you guys to get cut off from the learning adventure. So hope you don't mind. Okay, so let's put the next one on. We've, we've been talking, but we haven't actually shifted over to our next element. So let's put this on and we'll get that tape. Make sure our little key is nice and secure. Yes, you can. All right. I want to make sure that this key doesn't get lost, so I'm just going to kind of set him aside right here too. All right, let's get lined up on our lines. I've got the reference line here and here, so I'll get both of those aligned and let's sew this shape and then we'll continue and move forward. So you guys have already seen this shape, so at this point we're not really doing something too new as far as this goes. When I get down to the bottom, I'll just start going over to B and I'll align so that I can stitch down to the next line. Okay, so don't, don't go up the curve. Make sure you stay right on the straight line. As soon as your foot hits the bump stop at B, go ahead and just shift forward to get to the next line. And right now, I'm just going to watch my needle so that he's right in that center marked line that I have, which is right there. And then I can get him lined up and we'll sew this shape. So I will tell you on this sandwich, you can kind of see that I'm pushing a little bit hard. The reason for that is I actually have double batting on here right now. 
so it's quite a bit thick. I did raise my foot up, but that just means that the sandwich requires a little bit more pressure for it to move through the design. So I'll show you that when we get done, I'll actually flip it up. But what I like about that double batting is it's really gonna create a heavy pressure on the sandwich. So wherever we've quilted, we're gonna get a tremendous amount of compression and then the other areas will puff up. So it creates great visibility for your designs, especially when you have a layered look like what we're doing. So here I'll just take this off and I'll put the other one back on. So you can see this goes pretty quickly, you know, when we're switching back and forth. It's not that complicated. And look, I, I'll show you right here. If I wanted to do this before I, sh I shift over, I can just use my straight edge right there and get right over to that other side. That's probably easier if you're switching. You can just use that and get right into that center position right there. So that's a lot faster, right? If we're taking them on and off, we might as well. All right, let's put this on, get this little guy on there. Always securing that tape and getting aligned. All right, so here we go. Let's put this one in. The thread that I'm using today is a 40 weight three ply. It's from Superior Threads and it's Fantastico. And it is such a beautiful variegated color. And I really like that on solids because I think it adds a lot of dimension to the design. It adds a lot of visual appeal. This is a 40 weight three ply polyester thread. I do use it for quilting a lot. I think it just really has great impact and it looks really pretty. It's very strong, it's low lint. If you're sewing with a 40 weight polyester, you wanna use a 9014 top stitch or quilting needle. That's gonna give you probably the best results that you can get. And it's also gonna be a thread that is very low lint, so it's not gonna get your machine really filthy and that'll be nice and you won't have to clean it nearly as often. So here, again, I can just use my straight edge, any one that I have, and you're lining this up. If you really want that precision right in your seam, if this is a stitched seam, it would be good to use your spacing gauge because you could adjust it to fit right along your seam. I'm sure that if you're anything like me, my seams are a little uneven sometimes, that happens. And I think having that spacing gauge to be able to align on the seam really can help you get right in the ditch and get a really clean line and clean look for that. So I'm lined up right on my center mark. We'll put this one in. Right down to the center position. Okay, and then we'll take this off. Oh, thanks for your patience. You know, in order to show you the design, I gotta stitch it. Maybe next time I should have stitched half of it and then explained it, right? I'll think about that next time. So what do you think? Do you, do you like it so far? Do you like the design? Anybody have any uh, wild hair ideas about what I'm gonna do next? Do you have any ideas? I don't either. No, yes I do. <laughs> I do have an idea. I'm just kidding. Okay, right back down to the center. And then we'll finish this last one and be ready to add the next piece. So the inspiration for this is, you know, we do a lot with different templates and for today, I kind of wanted to show you another innovative way to use some of the templates that a lot of people have. And just know that there's always more value that you can get from your templates than just you know, what you see right on the packaging. Somebody recently asked me a question and I, I was a little bit um, unsure how to answer. The question was something like, if you're not in class and you're not having a teacher show you something that you can do, how would you know how to use the template? And in my mind, I was like, oh, well, um, hmm. Uh, the, the directions for any single one of the templates that we have can never show you what the possibilities are. It can show you a single way to use a tool, but just like you could use a hammer in a million different ways, right? Or you could use um, any kind of construction tool. Ooh, Guess what happened? My tape failed right there and my foot just went crazy. Okay, so it's bonbon time. So let's fix it. Let's pick your needle up 
And right now we know that up here at the top we were accurate. We were in the correct spot. So I'm literally going to just move my needle back to where I know I was in the exact correct spot right there. I'm just going to scoot this thread out of my way so that he's over there. And I'm going to put my template right back on. I've got this center alignment and I've got this alignment down on the bottom right along the line. Now this little stitch line right here, he's still there. I have not pulled him out. I'm going to get him later. I'm going to just do some tacking right here. Oh, I guess my bobbin is messed up too. Okay, let's cut it. I'll have to grab that bobbin because it's, it's lost its position. Let's see if I can even get it up. Maybe so. Right there. See, he was so short that he couldn't get picked up. Okay, so let's just cut some of these threads, clean up our space a little bit since we can. And we'll just cut that off. Okay. Let's do the same thing. We're going to come back to where we were last correct. I know that my needle position right here at the top was perfectly on. And I'm just going to pick up my thread. Since I'm already disconnected, I might as well pick it up. And then I'm going to realign the needle right there at the top. Okay, now, of course I forgot to put my ruler back on, right? Thank God we have that key. All right, let's put this on. And what am I going to do this time? I'm going to scoot this over and I'm going to tape this really well and make sure that my tape is very secure because it wasn't. Okay, then I'm going to get lined up right on all my reference lines. I'm right on the center line and right down here. This little bit of stitching, I'm just going to take it out later. I'm going to tack this right here with a few tacking stitches to secure that area. And then I'll just finish out that part of the design. Okay, and let's go ahead and we'll put that last shape in and then we're going to add that next piece. That next piece I'm really excited about. I think it looks amazing. And it's not complicated, it's just that it changes everything. It's so pretty and it adds another layer to the design. So again, let's make sure that our key is secure and everybody's flat and stuck in their spot. And I'm just going to put him away because we don't need him right now, so we'll just... Put him on the ruler rack. Okay, let's line this up. So I'm right on the edge, which is not a good idea. Usually you want to give yourself a little bit more room. So what I think I'll do right here on this one is maybe I'll just put in half, because if I go around to the other side, he's going to have trouble. He's not going to fit like he should. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, he's kind of bunky right there. Okay, so let's just cut it and we'll go ahead and we'll move on to that next piece. All right, so Jan, I'm going to show you what you were asking about. So hopefully you're still around and having fun and learning. Jan's question was, how do I pick my thread up so that it's on top? So we kind of just did it a minute ago, but we'll reiterate right now as we're talking. I can just cut all these excess threads. And right now, this is the bonbon right there. And what happens with the bonbon is I'm going to go back in and when I'm sitting around in front of the TV eating bonbons, I'm going to pick this out with my seam ripper and I can just take this extra stitching out and get him out of the way. He'll come right out. It's not a big deal. But because I tacked right up at the top there, what that does is that secures that stitch line. So now I can trim all these excess threads, get that bonbon out of there, and then all the rest of this is going to look nice and clean right there. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to add in that clamshell right now. Now, yeah, so I'm going to go right to that right now because we're going to get set for this thread and we're going to pick up our, our bobbin thread. So the bobbin thread, of course, right now is on the bottom. And in order to put it onto the top, quilters always want to do that. We always need to know what is happening. We don't want to be stitching through that thread over and over again on the bottom and we don't know where it is. This alignment mark, we are going to set this up so that our clamshell is touching on this line. So the little bitty orange right there is going to line up right on the bottom of the stitch line. That's why I put that tape on there as a reminder. So 
we're using the bottom alignment right here. You could use either. What we want is I want the clamshell to stitch above this. I don't want to cut into this. So if I lined it up on the regular stitch line down here, see how it would cut right through the middle? So this is allowing me to use these lines on here and I'm going to push it up so that it'll go right over the top like that. And I can choose how far up I want to go. I could make it go further if I wanted to, but it's just going to go kind of right over the top of this. This is less than a quarter right here, so it's going to stitch close to this, but it won't cut through it. So I've aligned the ruler. Let's go ahead and pick up that thread now. When I have my foot in place, I'm going to bring my needle down and back up, and then I'm going to release my presser foot pressure, and I'm going to pull this thread to just pick that thread right up. Do you see, Jan, that that just lifts that thread right up? So I'll just pull it out one more time. We've got our ruler aligned. Get your foot into your position that you want it to be in and just needle down and up and then release that presser foot pressure. Once I pull my top thread right here, if I pull that, there is the loop right there of that bobbin thread and that's how I can get this thread up onto the top. Once I do, I'm just gonna kind of hold those over here and I'll align my needle and my foot. So I'm just gonna put that needle down and we can start sewing. I'm lined up right on the reference line, right along there. That's the three inches apart right now. And that's gonna let me put this beautiful clamshell shape in. Oh, it's bunky right there. Let's see. That's what happens when you stitch so close to the edge, darn it. It's just being ornery. Let's see if I can get past it. There we go. So I'm right down and I'm above that bottom line. So we're not stitching down to the bottom. We're just creating this sort of hourglassy shape. Always hold right in the clamshell that you're working on. You don't need to hold the whole ruler. You just need to hold the clamshell that you're working on. So let's make a little adjustment. I really think that my foot is too tight here. So I'm just gonna loosen it up a little bit. If you're fighting with your fabric, and you're really having it push so hard that you have to struggle with it, that's probably a sign that your foot is too low. Mine was causing this little snow plow out in front like that as it moved and I was really having to fight with it. So I just raised it up just a little bit by unscrewing it and now I can get realigned. So I'm back on this orange mark right here and this is aligned right on the center of each of those. So I'll hold right in the clamshell. You can see I'm able to move much more easily at this point. Tuck it right in and then checking my alignment right here and I'm going to scoot my hand so I'm aligned right in this clamshell. Okay, and let's just put the last one in there. We'll get this last guy lined up. Now, if this was the seam right there, I could just stop right there and I could get over to the other side. What we'll do is we'll sort of just travel right out here a little bit. So then I would just scoot over however I needed to. I could sew off the edge of the fabric. If this was the edge of the quilt, if there was a seam, I could ditch across whatever I needed to to get to the other side. So let me show you the alignment on the other side. It's basically identical. Right, we're doing the same exact thing. We're gonna line up on the orange reference line right there. That just lets you see that alignment. The alignment's already on the ruler. We're just pushing it up two spaces from that center position. One, two, and we're lining it up on the bottom there. And then on each one of the designs, we're lining up right in the middle. So then my foot's already touching and let's just sew this side in. Right here, I'll switch positions with my hands and I'll sew this one. Now I can make these touch the top if I want to. I purposely am choosing not to do that, but that's okay. I don't need to worry about it. If, if I wanna make them touch or not, that's a design choice that I have and that you can do for yourself. Whatever you prefer, that's what you should do. I'm lined up right on the middle 
and it's going to sew right over the top and create a little space for that design to be encapsulated. So we went from just that single circles on quilts and we just spaced it every three inches and we did it on both sides. So right now what we're doing is we're filling in the middle of this design. And you can see that with each layer that we add, we're getting a little bit more complexity, a little bit more visual layering, and it's looking amazing. All right, so let's go ahead and um, flip it over. I'm gonna show you where we're going now. What do you think so far? Do you like it? I think it looks so pretty. <laughs> I love it. What do you think? Do you like it? So, you know, yeah, does it take time to do it? Of course. When does a quilter ever say, oh, that takes too much time? Well, maybe this won't work on that baby quilt that you need tomorrow. But if you just want to make it look pretty, then a lot of times I don't really care how much time it's going to take. I'm just going to get the beautiful design and I'm just going to take the time that I need to create the beauty that I want. Now, this is the three inch clamshell, right? So it, from the bottom here, this is three inches across, this is a half inch, but the diameter of this arc is the three inch. In order to echo this, I have to have a bigger circle. If I want to put a perfectly symmetrical echo right in there, then I have to have a bigger circle in order to do that. So we're going to do that right now. So what circle do we have that is in our fabulous sampler set? We have the four inch arc. The four inch arc is exactly a circle. It's actually a little bit more than a circle. Like if you just cut this right here, this is down below half. So this is actually clamshell plus, okay? So if I lay this right on here, I can pretty much just lay it on there like that and I can get whatever echo that I wanna get. I can even try two spaces, which will bring me to the center. Now, I don't want these necessarily to um, kiss right in the center, but I could make them do that. So let's go ahead and just scoot over a little bit. Again, you would start in wherever your design required. Like if this was a seam, you would pick up your thread by aligning the ruler first. So we're gonna have to scoot up a little. And I think we said we're gonna do it on two spaces. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm lined up right on that center line and I've got two spaces right there. Um, let's see, we'll do one because that's really what we need. Now, as we come in over here, we have to give a little bit of room, right? Because this is a half inch. We have a quarter inch on the ruler and a quarter inch on the foot. If I sew all the way until I'm touching, then I might not be able to align for the next loop. Right, so I'm gonna leave a quarter inch of space as I sew in. So visually, as I'm coming around, I don't wanna crowd it. I'm gonna stop when I have my quarter inch right there. Then I can just scoot this over. I'll get lined right up on the center and you can see we're pretty much at a quarter inch right there. And we'll just keep walking this over. Now, one of the things that I could do with this is I could make it touch and I could actually create a little cross hatching right there. I could make it touch and then come back and sew the next one and create a little cross hatch. The way that we're doing it, we're just gonna be creating an echo, but I think it's important for you to know that you have an option to make it different if you want to. That little subtle changes, we'll do the cross hatch on this side and we'll leave it echoed on this side so you can see the difference in the design. We're lining right up on the center, right on the first ring, that's the quarter inch spacer. And then as we come across, we're gonna give us that little quarter inch of space right there so that we can align for the next loop. Can you see I just almost ran over my finger right there? Ha! Ah! You guys are out of view. So what do you think? So we've just kept adding little piece by little piece and what do you think doesn't that look super fantastic right there i love it i think it looks amazing all right so let's do the other side and we'll show the cross hatching on that side the cross hatching is just the same as this but it's going to look a little bit different when we are coming in right here so 
Let's scoot up a little so we can line our ruler up. We'll line it up the same. We're on the center position and we're on the first line down through the center. And on this one, what we would do to get the cross hatching is you're gonna sew in until you touch, and I'm gonna hold this in position, touch the line, and now we're gonna come back up that quarter inch right there. Now when we put this on, I'll get it lined up just the same, but I have to go backwards and touch, and then I'll go forwards. Okay, so here, touch the line, and then we'll go back up that quarter inch. This is the space to line up on the next position. Okay, and what do I have to do now to get that? Do you guys remember? We just did it. We have to do something before we go forwards. We have to go backwards. We have to close the crosshatch on the back before we go forwards. So here we'll touch and then come back that quarter inch. This is that space for us to move over. We'll get aligned right on that center position and we're gonna go backwards, close this arc and go forwards. Okay, and here we'll touch and we'll come back that quarter inch and we'll do the last cross hatch. So we're aligned right on the center line of that design and we'll put that last cross hatch in. Okay, so let me go ahead, I'm going to cut this really quick so we can share it. We're right here on the edge, so I think I'll just cut these threads. All right, so what we've done at this point is a progressive layering of this, and you can see you've got the cross hatch here, and then you've got it open right here. So we were just creating space. What you can also do is you can mark this line in the middle and you could sew to that center position because that's where this connects. This is right in the middle of the pivot. So if I did mark this one and a half inch between these, then you would just sew to the mark line and then you transition. So that's easy as well. But love the cross hatch. It always adds a little bit of great detail and I think it looks really, really good. So I've got one more idea of something that we can do here that I think that would go in the center and then that's where we're gonna probably end it for today because we have to be done a little bit early today. So we just sewed with this template and if we want to echo that, I should be able to pretty closely put that right on there and you can see that this is right about that half inch right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a narrower echo right in here, right through the center and I'm gonna show you how we travel to do that. So we still would need to do one side at a time And we're gonna line this up right on the stitch line as best we can. We're kind of close to the edge here, so it might be a little tricky in this spot. So right here, we're gonna use the foot as the spacer, right? So right there, we're touching with the foot on this stitch line, okay? And then we'll just scoot over and you'll see that that's a quarter inch right there. And I, I will short it a little bit if it isn't, right? Does anybody remember what was the distance initially that we used when we were making these? Does anybody remember? The spacing for this whole thing is five and a half. Okay, so there is gonna be space in the center for us to play with this. So let's go ahead, we'll do this one side. We're gonna try to get right to the center right at the cross right there. You can see I'm gonna to have to adjust on this side. I'm gonna get it lined up and we'll echo at a quarter inch on that side. Right until the foot is touching and then getting just the one side aligned so I can come right into the center there. Okay, and then shift it over to get this other side. The reason that you end up having to shift is we are um, trying to echo this arc bigger. We're not doing parallel arcs, we're actually making an arc that is bigger 
So that's why we have to adjust the position, okay? You, you might be wondering like why do we have to do that if we're doing the same shape? But this actually is echoing this four, so it's wider than four. It's actually a half inch. So if you had a four and a half inch circle, that's what you would need to echo this precisely. But we don't have that, so we're fudging. So we'll get right into the center there, and then we'll adjust this and we'll get back. Now I'm gonna come back to the center position right here so that I can show you what it looks like on the other side. So give me a second. Let's just scoot it and turn it over. So now we've added another layer of more complex density, okay, to that spacing. And you can see that you'll still have the crosshatch here, but this is an echo. And what we'll do is we'll echo on this side and it should touch. We're gonna try to make the design close this little diamond right in the center. And you don't have to. If yours is wider, say that you needed six inches and your diamonds don't touch, what I would do in that case is wherever the diamond needed to connect over a little bit to get that quarter inch, just sew a little straight line in between. They don't have to touch. And what you could do is, you know, essentially have a diamond and then a line and diamond and a line. And that's how you could travel down there. So it's okay if they don't fit exactly 100% perfect. You can just make your own choices there to make it fit how you want to. But in this case, it is going to fit pretty much right to that center diamond position right there. So I'm just using my eyes to get right to the center. And I can also, of course, use my spacing gauge if I want to. It's going to look a little bit asymmetrical because we did the cross hatching on the one side. So just know that I can kind of see it's going to be a little bit not lined up perfectly. But that's OK. That's where those center line marks in between the clamshells could be really helpful to get everything lined up that way. Right to the center. Shift your template right here to get it lined up on the next side. Okay, and then the same thing. And we'll get right to that center position. So, the goal here in this class was to show you how with progressive layering, you can go from a very basic, simple design to something that is much more complex, but not harder. The design has a lot more complex visual impact, but it wasn't that hard to sew. When we do just one little piece at a time and we add one little element at a time, then you get that level of complexity. And the hardest part about planning for this design was creating that space in the center. What I did is I, I knew that I wanted to fit this shape and I did not want my circle to cut into it. So the very first thing that I did when I was playing with it is I knew that I wanted the clamshell over the top so I knew I was going to have that three inch spacing with my clamshell. If I want to have a two inch spacing with my circle, I can do that also. I would make these lines two inches apart, but I needed this depth, right? I needed this width and I created a little space in the middle. So that's why I chose that five and a half because I knew I could add a little bit of filler in there. And that was the whole impetus for this spacing and for the width of it. And so if I have six, I can make it six. I can just put more fill here in the middle and I can still create whatever width that I want to have. So this is just the first design that I have in this border um, progressive development series. So we do have two more that I've got planned. So next week we'll be doing part two and that will be probably regular time. So thank you for understanding that we're gonna be a little bit shorter today. I hope you enjoyed it. And here's kind of a little bit of a side look for it. I will go back and I will um, answer any question that I missed. One question that I did see is somebody asked what thread. The top thread I'm using is Fantastico by Superior Threads. It's 5032, which is this really gorgeous rainbow thread. Super pretty, look at that so gorgeous, especially on this teal, I love it. And this thread is um, a 40 weight three ply. 
You can get it from Superior Threads or from any manufacturer that deals in. So Linda Martindale, yes, you can see the back. Guess what? The back is, as always, plain. <laughs> I like to show differences so you can see what difference the thread makes. So right here, this is just plain. This is a very light colored thread. It's a very, very fine thread. This is 80 weight deco bob, right? And you can see I was able to get a very good tension. I don't have a lot of dottiness from the other side. And this is a very, very fine thread. And here's where you really can see the texture of that double batting. So there's the batting right there. I've got one that's really thin. And then this is Quilter's Dream. I think this is the Request Loft, I think. It's pretty thick. So this one's a little thinner right there. This is a 80-20 and this is 100% cotton. And right there, you could really see the change in density that that double batting has. So before my husband divorces me, <laughs> I have to say goodbye. But thank you guys so much. I appreciate your patience. This will be published on Facebook and it will be available on an ongoing basis. So have a lovely day. Happy quilting. Have a good night, you guys. Thank you.